Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Learn English podcast. I'm Leo. And I'm Gwen. It's great to see you all again. In this podcast, we will explore what true confidence means. We'll explain the difference between feeling sure in a healthy way and being too proud or thinking you're better than others. We'll also discuss where confidence comes from. Some factors that build confidence come from inside us, like our thoughts and personalities. Are you ready to discuss it today, Leo? Totally, Gwen. Let's dive into today's fascinating topic, how to become a confident person. Today, we're going to talk about something really important, confidence. But before we start, let me ask you, Leo, what does confidence mean to you? Well, Gwen, to me, confidence is feeling sure about yourself and your abilities. It's believing that you can do things well. That's a good explanation, Leo. Feeling sure is having a positive belief in your abilities. But Gwen, do people sometimes think being confident is the same as being too proud or feeling better than others? We need to learn the difference between being confident, being too proud, and thinking you are the best. Confident is good. It means you trust your skills, but you can still learn more. Being too proud means you think you are the best and you are not nice to others. Thinking you are better means you think you are very important. I understand. So confident is believing in yourself without putting others down or thinking you're the best. Yes, exactly, Leo. Feeling sure is feeling good about yourself, but also being humble and respectful to others. That makes sense. Can you give an example? Sure. Let's say you give a talk in class. If you feel sure, you will prepare well and then speak clearly and look at your classmates. You'll believe you can do a good job, but you won't brag or act better than everyone. So, Gwen, where does being confident start? Well, Leo, confident can come from inside ourselves and from the world around us. And next, we'll discuss how to increase feeling sure by setting goals we can reach. Setting goals that are possible to achieve is very important for building confidence. I can see why, Gwen. If we set goals that are too hard, we might feel disappointed when we can't reach them. Exactly. That's why it's better to set smaller, easier goals first. Achieving these goals, even if they are small, will make us feel more sure of ourselves. Can you give us some tips on how to set goals we can achieve? First, Think about what you want to do and why it's important to you. Then, break that bigger goal into smaller steps. Like, if I want to learn a new language, I could first set a goal to learn basic words and phrases. After achieving that first small goal, you'll feel more confident and can set a new, slightly bigger goal. And we should also make our goals specific and clear, right, Gwen? Yes, that's a great point, Leo. Unclear goals like get better at math are hard, but a clear goal like learn the multiplication tables is easier. I got it now. Set small, clear, step-by-step -step goals to increase confidence as we achieve them one by one. Let's look at some related words. One, ability, meaning the power or skill to do something. Example, this program has the ability to adapt to its user. Two, explanation, meaning a reason given to explain why something happened. Example, the most likely explanation is that his plane was delayed. Three, personality, meaning the combination of characteristics that make someone unique. Example, his wife has a strong personality. Four, goal, meaning something that you want to achieve. Example, you need to set yourself some long-term goals. Five, positive, meaning having good or beneficial qualities. Example, the contributions have a positive impact on the lives of hundreds of children. What is the difference between confident and being too proud? Answer, Feeling sure is having a good belief in yourself. Being too proud means you think you are better than everyone else. Feeling sure is good, but being too proud is bad. 
Why is it important to set achievable goals? Answer, setting goals that are possible to reach is important. Achieving small goals first makes us feel more sure of ourselves. We can then set bigger goals after feeling success. Now let's talk about something that can make us feel unsure about ourselves, the fear of failing. That's a big problem for many people, Gwen. Being afraid of not doing well can really hurt our confidence. You're absolutely right, Leo. Fear of failure is one of the biggest things that stops us from being confident and trying new things. It's almost like that fear stops us and makes us too scared to even start working towards our goals. Exactly. But there are ways we can fight that fear and not let it control us. What strategies would you suggest for overcoming fear of failure? Well, Leo, one helpful thing is to remember that failing is a normal part of life. Everyone fails sometimes when they try something new. Failure doesn't mean we're bad or incapable. It just means we have more to learn, right? Yes. Another strategy is to start small, just like we talked about with setting achievable goals. Take small steps so any failures feel smaller and easier to handle. We can also change how we think about failure. Instead of a bad thing, see it as helpful feedback to help us improve. Right. We can also remind ourselves of past challenges we overcame when feeling discouraged. Building resilience sounds hard, but thinking about the positive things in our past successes can really help. It certainly can, Leo. Support systems are important, too. Resilient people build networks to lean on. Having family, friends, teachers, or colleagues who encourage us through tough times. Yes, exactly. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Resilient people know they don't have to go through everything alone. Thank you, Gwen. I have a much better understanding of why resilience matters for self-confidence now. Let's look at some new words. One, strategy, meaning a plan that is intended to achieve a particular purpose. Example, we need to devise an effective long-term strategy. Two, incapable, meaning not able to do something. Example, the children seem to be totally incapable of working by themselves. Three, manageable, meaning possible to deal with or control. Example, the debt has been reduced to a more manageable level. Four, difficult, meaning hard to do, deal with, or understand. Example, she'd been experiencing technical difficulties. Five, barrier, meaning an object like a fence that prevents people from moving forward from one place to another. Example, the crowd had to stand behind barriers. And that brings us to the end of today's podcast episode. Thank you all for joining us today. Remember, the key to a fulfilling life is balancing love and career. Don't forget to check out the free PDF in the description for more useful vocabulary. Goodbye, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.